Trevor Alonzo. This is my review of Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 2. Well, at least the last two parts. How do these last two episodes compare? Well, let's get into it right now. So spoilers for the rest of the review. The first episode is an Arrow episode. We get to see the origin of the Monitor. He travels to a dawn of time. His time travel experiment creates the Anti-Universe, and it creates the Anti-Monitor. When we see the Paragons, it's sometime after the last part. Supergirl is holding Superman's cape like he held her in the Crisis cover. They are all getting ready for the final fight, and they built a teleportation device. Lex tests it out by going through. The Flash finds out they are outside the Speed Force, which he can't use now. Green Arrow shows up. He reveals that he stayed in Purgatory in order to train with the Spectre. Now he has become a Spectre, and has a lame costume. I get Spectre's costume is a hood and a cape, but they could have tried harder for this. He explains how the Monitor created the Anti-Monitor. Spectre uses his powers to give Flash the Speed Force. Flash uses the Speed Force. They all end up in different places. Supergirl, Lex Luthor, and the Doc end up in an alien world. Flash and Green Arrow go back to when they first met. Green Arrow realizes he's a Spectre and sends Flash to another place. He gets sent to another Earth where he meets the movie Flash from Justice League. It's a funny scene. Also, you have a better movie costume with the TV costume. They even make fun of the TV costume. With the movie Flash saying, oh, is this cosplay? TV Flash says something about his costume. Movie Flash says, your costume looks more comfortable. Then the movie Flash vanishes. So, now it's starting to look like that Ben Affleck is the only Justice League actor that's out. Everyone else is staying or trying to stay. We find out that Lex Luthor now has superpowers. Since he rewrote the Book of Destiny, Batwoman ends up at Green Arrow's origin. Martian Manhunter shows up at the point when Green Arrow and Supergirl met. Supergirl and Doc wander through the woods, trying to get to Lex. Flash meets a younger Green Arrow. Lex goes to the Monitor's first trip. He actually warns him of what will happen, but Lex wants to go through in order to get the Monitor's powers, in order to kill Superman. So even when he's being a good guy, he's still being a bad guy. Which, he already has superpowers at this point, so even more superpowers? Well, then again, that does sound like Lex Luthor. I do have to say, John Cryer does a really good job as Lex Luthor. The Flash brings back Black Canary. Martian Manhunter picks up the Flash. So, the Flash uses the Speed Force to pick up Batwoman. Supergirl shows up to stop Lex. They get into a fight. Flash uses the Speed Force to take everyone to the dawn of time at the Anti-Universe. Everyone begins to fight the Shadow Demons. The Spectre faces off against the Anti-Monitor. As the Spectre defeats the Anti-Monitor, the Paragons realize they have to concentrate on the Book of Destiny in order to save the world. The Anti-Monitor is killed as a new universe is made. Spectre dies as he sees that they saved everything. That's the end of that episode. The next episode is in Legends of Tomorrow. Supergirl wakes up in a world where everything appears to be normal. No one remembers the crisis except the Paragons. In this world, Lex Luthor is now in charge, and has won a Nobel Peace Prize. I think he used the Book of Destiny to his advantage here. Martian Manhunter meets Supergirl and shows her that only the Paragons remember what happened. This next part feels a little bit like filler. Weather Witch shows up. Supergirl stops her and the Flash shows up. They learn now that all their Earths are just one. Earth Prime. I'll put it this way, in layman's terms, they did a soft reboot of the CW's worlds. Like in the comic books, Crisis rebooted the DC Comics. The Green Arrow team grieves over the loss of Oliver. Meanwhile, Nash almost starts the crisis again by digging up the same artifact. They all realize that they saved the all-known... They realize that they saved all-known existence. At the same time, Mike has a book signing of the erotic book that he was talking about in the first one. While that is happening, a giant teddy bear named Bebo attacks. All the heroes show up to stop it, but they find out it's run by magic. Turns out the sorcerer set it up as a distraction so he can rob a bank. This giant teddy bear attack seems like filler to get to the end. It wasn't really needed, and it just feels like it's a little out of place. They found out the Anti-Monitor is still a threat when the Shadow Demons show up. They plan on shrinking the Anti-Monitor forever in order to get rid of him once and for all. The Anti-Monitor and the Demons show up to face off. 
Now all the superheroes charge, yelling out for all over. While the final battle begins, the anti-monitor grows big. I mean really big, like Godzilla big. They fight for a while, and it's pretty good. They finally kill the anti-monitor with a shrink bomb. After this, there is a news broadcast of the events that happened, and they reveal to the world that Oliver Queen is Green Arrow and saved the world. They have a moment of silence for him. I'm not too happy with them letting the whole world know who he is. In almost every comic book hero that dies saving the world, his identity is still kept a secret. The other Earths and universes grow back, creating different universes. Basically, the other shows and movies are still in continuity. We see a Stargirl Earth. We see a Green Lantern Earth. They clearly used the footage from the movie, but it's cool to see that they mentioned it. We see Titans. We see Doom Patrol. We see Swamp Thing. We see Kingdom Come Superman, and it's a quick nod to Christopher Reeve's Superman with him flying over to Earth. The heroes set an eternal flame for Oliver, and agree to start a league. They have a giant table at a hall. So now we have a Justice League in the CW world now. The show ends with a quick nod to Gleek, the monkey from the old Justice League cartoon, and they play the Super Friends theme. Overall, I thought it was good. I do think there were some spots that felt like filler, especially the Bebo attack. It did pretty good for a TV budget. They stay close to the comics for the most part, but had to do some changes since they don't have rights to all the characters. Also, the budget does come into play in that part, but it doesn't really affect it that much. It's cool seeing what they can come up with. The acting is really good. This time around, the action was great. With the first three episodes, you can tell on some shows they have different stuntmen or different budgets, so it kind of affected it a little bit. I did like it. If you're a superhero fan or a DC comic books fan, I recommend this. I give this a 9 out of 10 comic book covers. It is long, but you will enjoy it. Okay, so what's your favorite part of these two? Tell me in the comments. Mine was the Flash meeting the movie Flash. Thank you for watching my video.